Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with Ablecine, and today we are going to be talking about version 3 of Small HD's firmware. In fact, today we have version 3.1.2 on all of these monitors, and this version of the firmware is the most comprehensive firmware they have released to date. It is compatible with all of their monitors except for the AC7 and DP7 Pro series. So what I want to do is just go over some of the key features that are part of the firmware update that I think are important. And for me, it's adding some key things that I think will just make using their monitors in your productions easier. Now, how do you do the update? It's pretty easy. What you need to do is you need to have an SD card. It needs to be formatted correctly, and it does have to be 16 gigabytes or less in physical size. Once the card is formatted, that firmware on here, that bin file, and then you're going to go ahead and put that into your monitor, and you will go to the firmware page, and you will go ahead and update your firmware. Now, it does take some time, so either have your monitor plugged in uh, to mains or make sure that you have a freshly charged battery on your monitor in order to do that. And then once it's done with the process, you can verify that it is version 3.1.2. In our case, there may be a later firmware update once you are watching this, and then you will add this additional functionality to your monitors. So the first and the probably most important and the largest update that is part of this firmware is the fact that we can now, with the X-Rite based small HD color probe, we can auto calibrate with all of our monitors. And what that means is that we do not need to use a computer and load a calibration LUT from there and have that computer with us to actually perform the calibration. Today I have the 1303 HDR, I have a 503, I have a Focus. They are all capable of running this software and they're also capable of using this probe. So let's take a look at the calibration process. What we do is we take this color probe here and it is nice because it does have a counterweight. If it's sitting on a larger monitor, you can make sure it's sitting correctly. We're just gonna go ahead and take that probe and we're gonna go ahead and attach that to our monitor. And as you can see here, that's what we've done. It does come with a full USB to micro USB adapter. So if you're using that for your smaller monitors, then you can attach it. And as soon as you plug it in, it will automatically detect the color probe and it will ask you if you want to calibrate. Now, you can also go into the menu system and you can go down into calibration and choose auto calibration inside of there. And when you go in, as you can see here, which is also new to the firmware update, you can choose your white points. Now, in most situations, you're gonna choose D65 because that's what we're using pretty much across the boards. But you do have the choice to choose things like DCI P3. You can choose specific Kelvin temperatures. But again, in most situations, D65. And then what you do is you activate the calibration process, which you can see here. Now each small HD monitor comes from the factory auto calibrated. And what that means is there's already a calibration LUT loaded into your small HD monitor. When you go through this auto calibration process and it gets to the end, when you are taking a look at your old and your new calibration, that's what you're comparing it to. You are at least initially comparing it to the factory default in terms of the calibration. Now, if we go through this process and then you calibrate again, then you'll be comparing to your last calibration, but you always have the option inside of the monitor to go back to the default factory setting. Now, once the calibration process is done, then you can just run that on your other monitors if you have multiple small HD monitors. And every once in a while, you may want to calibrate your monitor just to make sure that it is tuned up and in good shape. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to our image and we are going to go into and turn on our waveform. So there it is showing up on our screen. And one of the things that I love here is we can always ignore the look that's being applied to the image or the LUT. 
and make sure that we're seeing a pre-LUDed waveform if we want to. And here we can just go down to spot meter, which is new for the firmware. We can enable that and you can see that little box show up. We can change the size of that box in terms of how large or how small it is, uh, width and height. And also we can change the location of the box. So I'm just changing where that box is. And then what we can do is we can get a reading on our waveform monitor based on the size of that box in terms of what our luminance levels are. So this is a luminance based spot meter here. And you can see as I increase that, I'm now taking a sampling of a larger part of our image. And as I move that spot meter around the screen, you can see how it changes in terms of telling me what my IRE values are based on where that spot meter is sitting. So another really nice feature with the updated firmware. So another part of the firmware update are expanded options in terms of the false color exposure assist. So we're gonna go over here, we're going to activate the exposure assist. And then down here, we can see our style options, airy, spectrum, but here we have map one, two, and three. And what this allows you to do is create your own color ranges based on IRE, so you can design your own maps for your false color exposure assist. So if I go into map one here, and then I choose edit, I can go in and start to add up to 10 of these ranges. So I'll say plus, and I'll say, let's see, we'll use these colors here to designate our minimum and our maximum IRE values, 45 to 55 for that. And then I can go in here and say plus, and we'll use these colors here to do the next range. So I'm just gonna go over to here and we'll say that's 56 to 65. And as you can see here, what we're doing is we're starting to build, and I'll save this here just with two for this example. We're starting to build our own false color exposure assist. So this gives you a tremendous amount of control in terms of mapping again using IRE what colors you want to see when you are identifying those ranges. And for the small HD focus, there are a couple of other updates here. We have the ability now over HDMI with the small HD focus to actually feed in a 4K up to 30p signal into this, and it will take that signal and it will down convert it to the screen resolution that's here. So you can do that now. And when you're using Sony style batteries, the battery indicator here is much more accurate with the camera system. So that's really a great improvement overall. All right, there you have it. That's version three of Small HD's firmware. And as I said before, we're showing you version 3.1.2. There may be a newer version when you watch this. Do go to Small HD's website to see the comprehensive list of all of the features that are included with this firmware. These are just some of the key ones that I thought you should be aware of and may make it worthwhile for you to update your monitors when you are using them in your productions. Thanks for watching.